Good evening and a very warm welcome to this special service of Holy Communion for Maundy Thursday. Uh, it's special partly because it's Maundy Thursday and it's the particular occasion in the year when we remember the institution of the Lord's Supper, the origin of our Holy Communion service. Uh, it's special also because uh, in these days of pandemic and uh, social distancing and so on, we have no congregation here. So this is a recorded service uh, where I hope you will feel able to participate watching online and at home, even though you can't share physically in the bread and the wine. Nevertheless, this is an important act of worship, affirming that we are all part of the one body of Christ. So I hope you can receive it in that spirit even though we're at a distance from each other. And thirdly, it's a very special occasion because we welcome as our guest preacher this evening, uh, Bishop Nick Drayson, who is of course known to many in the Minster community from his time as associate vicar uh, a decade or so back. Uh, and uh, Nick and Catherine have been in Beverly for much of the last year. Uh, and it's lovely that Nick is able to be with us through the Triduum, through these three days of Maundy Thursday, uh, Good Friday, and through uh, to Easter Sunday. And he will be offering reflections uh, not only tonight, but also tomorrow between two and three o'clock for Good Friday at the cross. And on Easter Sunday morning, he'll be preaching at our 10.30 Eucharist. So a warm welcome to Nick. It's good to have you back with us again. So shall we be still for a moment as we turn our attention to the Lord Jesus Christ and as we prepare ourselves to worship him. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. And now our reduced choir is going to sing An Upper Room Did Our Lord Prepare. Lord Jesus Christ says, If you love me, keep my commandments. Unless I wash you, you have no part in me. So let us confess to Almighty God our sins against his love and ask him to cleanse us. Have mercy on us, O God, in your great goodness. According to the abundance of your compassion, blot out our offences. 
Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Against you only have we sinned and done what is evil in your sight. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Purge us from our sin and we shall be clean. Wash us and we shall be whiter than snow. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may the Father forgive us by the death of his Son and strengthen us to live in the power of the Spirit all our days. Amen. God our Father, your Son Jesus Christ was obedient to the end and drank the cup prepared for him. May we who share his table watch with him through the night of suffering and be faithful. Amen. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example, that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, Servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. When Judas had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. 
This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Father, what we know not teach us, what we have not give us, and what we are not make us, for Christ's sake. Amen. Amen. It's almost 12 years since my family and I left Beverly after 10 happy years living and working here. We've enjoyed the opportunity to be based here again under these unusual circumstances. And during these months in Beverly, confined as all of us have been, I've been reminded almost daily of places and occasions where things happened. Memory is a powerful thing. It was only just over a year ago we'd made arrangements to come and visit and speak here at the Minster. And these are, of course, now a distant memory. But it's great finally to be with you in person. Many things planned before lockdown are just a memory for all of us. Some people have even taken the opportunity of writing their memoirs. I expect we all have events that we can recall in great detail, although maybe a bit embellished by time. Concerts, sporting events, holidays, as part of our Easter services, we do a lot of remembering of events we never actually took part in, but are an important part of our identity. Every time we take communion, we are instructed by Jesus to do this in remembrance of him. And Maundy Thursday, above any other day in the Christian calendar except perhaps Corpus Christi, we remember Jesus' institution of those words and acts which serve to keep on reminding us. I suspect most people, including most world leaders, hope they will be remembered. But they don't necessarily leave an object or, a, or sayings specifically to be remembered by. And the fascinating thing about Jesus is that he did not only ask to be remembered in the act of sharing bread and wine, but his legacy was a meal rather than a book or some other symbolic action. Of course, today we are remembering his other actions and words at that final meal with his disciples, taking off his outer garment and washing his disciples' feet. If I, your Lord and Master, do this, how much more should you and his issue of a new commandment, love one another as I have loved you. The important thing in helping us understand what he was doing is to look at the context, the place where he chose to make that connection, the Passover meal. Much care had been taken to ensure the room was ready, that they wouldn't be disturbed, that all the elements of the feast were included, the lamb, the bitter herbs, unleavened bread for the table, wine for the cups of blessing, and then the bowl, the towel, the water for the feet. These last were an ingredient of hospitality even though the room was lent for the occasion. The symbolism of every sharing of Passover meal in every Jewish home is almost overwhelming. On this occasion, we don't know who would have taken the role of the child asking the significance of it all, as would happen at every Jewish Passover meal. But we know that Jesus had longed to share this meal with his disciples one last time, and that he deliberately described the next time as being in his kingdom. And so, references to blood and body would not have seemed quite so strange. Even words like forgiveness of sins and new covenant would have fitted as Jesus wove a story about the Paschal Lamb with himself at the centre. Do this, he said, every time you drink it in remembrance of me. Was he giving a roadmap, a blueprint perhaps? St Paul picked up on this when he said, the cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a sharing of the blood of Christ? For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. 
For the disciples, it was about remembering, and no doubt they thought of other Passovers, and even of future ones. But Paul, with hindsight, including the death and resurrection of the Messiah, saw it as a message, a death to proclaim, a return to herald. So this is what we do. Maybe familiarity blunts the impact of this remembering. But we do, in fact, remember and say thank you. This is what the word Eucharist means. Recently, in my own diocese in South America, we've been looking at our central values and decided that one of them is to be Eucharist, or gratitude as a central factor in our life as a church and our faith. It's sometimes helpful to think of Eucharist or communion, Lord's Supper, as looking back to what Jesus did, looking inward to how this affects us, looking up in worship, looking round at our fellow worshippers, and looking forward to his return and our redemption. All this and much more is present every time we remember together with bread and wine, even if at the moment the priest takes it on behalf of all of us. But perhaps on this night of the year, we can allow ourselves an extra memory or two. For not only did Jesus give his disciples and us a memory which was not just visual and verbal, but involved touch and taste, which incidentally was also an explanation of the horrifying events which would unfold over the next 24 hours, he also gave a similarly multidimensional lesson in how to be great he shocked them by doing the unthinkable in that context by washing their feet. Taking off his outer garment, he wrapped a towel around him, poured water in a basin and started to wash their feet. Peter's horror at this and rejection of it not only speaks of his pride but of the honour in which he held Jesus and his understanding of who Jesus was as their master. Yet Jesus, as he so often did, chose this moment to reinterpret it all and show Peter and the other disciples that if he who indeed was their Lord and Master was prepared to do the dirty and, unnecess and, un and necessary acts of service for them, how much more should they do it to one another? A new commandment was being given by which others would know they were his disciples. It was so different and unexpected that it would distinguish them it would be their badge. Sharing bread and wine in his memory, and as part of normal meals, not just a church service, would distinguish them. But so would love of the sort he was about to show them, and so would foot washing. We very often do foot washing at this Maundy Thursday service, even though it is symbolic, and there are plenty of far more real ways of fulfilling its meaning, it is still uncomfortable and profoundly moving to be served in this way by the leader or servant who does it. It should make us all rethink leadership and service. So we remember Jesus in these ways, with bread and wine, with foot washing, with loving one another. But how important is remembering? As we get older, our short-term memory deteriorates, but we tend to recall all sorts of details from long ago. And the Bible repeatedly calls us to remember. Moses says, remember the whole way that the Lord your God has led you. This is a warning about prosperity and recognizing our dependence on God. The writer of Lamentations says in the version of the message, I'll never forget the trouble, I remember it all. Oh, how well I remember. But there's one other thing I remember, and remembering, I keep a grip on hope. God's loyal love couldn't have run out. It's created new every morning. Remembering how we got here, remembering who we are. The story of the golden calf serves to show us how easily we forget. And Jesus maybe wanted his disciples to pass on something easy to remember. It wasn't the bread and the wine that were going to save us. Saying, this is my body, is like 
showing a photo and saying, this is me. But it does constantly remind us of what it was that saves us and does still save us. The memory doesn't make it any more effective, effective as an act, but it does heighten our participation in it. Tomorrow, Good Friday, we will be remembering Jesus' death on the cross. In some way, remembering will bring it home to us again. It can even change us. But it's what we do with that that makes the remembering powerful. It's no secret that meals at which the early church remembered by sharing bread and wine were called agapes, love feasts, because what it meant was what Jesus taught them that night by washing their feet and giving them a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another. It's what we do with the remembering not as James says, like those who are hearers but not doers, who look in the mirror and on going away immediately forget, but as those who remember and do the foot washing and do the loving of one another. For we being many are one bread and one body because we all share in that one bread. And so Jesus says to us tonight, remember me in these ways and together. Amen. Because we are unable to be here together this evening, uh, we're not going to reenact the foot washing. Uh, but uh, Bishop Nick has given us plenty to reflect on in that regard as to how we might serve one another. So let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you have taught us that what we do for the least of our brothers and sisters, we do also for you. Give us the will to be the servant of others, as you were the servant of all, and gave up your life and died for us, but are alive and reign now and forever. Amen. And so let us pray. Father, on this night he was betrayed. Your Son, Jesus Christ, washed his disciples' feet. We commit ourselves to follow his example of love and service. Lord, hear us and humble us. On this night, he prayed for his disciples to be one. We pray for the unity of your church. Lord, hear us and unite us. On this night, he prayed for those who were to believe through his disciples' message. We pray for the mission of your church. Lord, hear us and renew our zeal. On this night, he commanded his disciples to love, but suffered rejection himself. We pray for the rejected and unloved. Lord, hear us and fill us with your love. On this night, he reminded his disciples that if the world hated them, it hated him first. We pray for those who are persecuted for their faith. Lord, hear us and give us your peace. And so as we come to the peace, uh, wherever you are, if you're able to stand, uh, then please do so. Jesus says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. 
And so if you have anyone with you with whom you can share God's peace, please do so now. Um, or if there's someone uh, who is in particular need of God's peace at this time, then you might just hold them before the Lord in your prayers. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right to give you thanks, Father most holy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For on this night he girded himself with a towel, and taking the form of a servant, washed the feet of his disciples. He gave us a new commandment, that we should love one another as he has loved us. Knowing that his hour had come, in his great love he gave this supper to his disciples, to be a memorial of his passion, that we might proclaim his death until he comes again and feast with him in his kingdom. Therefore, earth unites with heaven to sing a new song of praise. We too join with angels and archangels as they proclaim your glory without end. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms and bring us with St John of Beverley and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven, through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. 
Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts, by faith and with thanksgiving. The body of Christ, the blood of Christ.
when the disciples had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Jesus prayed to the Father, If it is possible, take this cup of suffering from me. He said to his disciples, How is it that you were not able to keep watch with me for one hour? The hour has come for the Son of Man to be handed over to the power of sinful men. Come, let us go. Christ was obedient unto death. Go in his peace. Thank you. 